Hey everybody, it is the Drive to School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, your host, and joining me today is uh, my good buddy, Pastor Matt Richard. How you doing, man? It's good to see you. Yeah, good you to see too. you. Um, take a little bit of pulling the throttle back this morning, man, obviously at home, and uh, headed in the hospital a little bit. I told you I had a busy day yesterday. Um, yeah. But uh, got some people, uh, some saints not doing too well in the hospital, so I took this morning to kind of recuperate, hit the head out the hospital, and evening of confirmation and so forth, so... Yeah. Never stops. I appreciate you taking some time out of the day for us. It's it's a chance to unpack some of the stuff that honestly we have that that, that sort of goes on in between the one-on-one conversations that we have somebody. They're, they're some of the most profound and meaningful uh, teaching opportunities that we have. They're the place where the gospel actually hits the road. But but then the chance to sort of reflect on those and share them with a slightly wider audience is sometimes nice too, because I guarantee if the one person's struggling with it, there's, there's you know, two or three others, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's... Uh... Yeah, the, the I guess I've always told people that the hospital, the the bedside, and those kind of things, that's where that's where the rubber meets the road. Um, that's where the gospel shines, uh, absolutely shines uh, in the midst yeah. of those uh, tough, difficult circumstances. Right. Those are the things that sort of peel back all the layers of, of the bureaucracy, of, of even just sort of the assumptions that we make about God. When, you, when you're laying in the hospital bed, you're going to meet God face to face one day. Uh, there, there will be a last day either because you fall asleep or, or because Christ returns. We were talking before we started recording about, you know, meeting God face to face, about actually seeing the face of God. And uh, that that idea, that understanding has shifted a lot throughout history. Let's talk a little bit about that. What does Jesus say about sort of meeting him face to face? Yeah, um, the the idea of, of, of face, right? Um, the idea of face is 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 presence, right? And so if, if I were to, you know, go like hide my face, then I'm removing my my presence from you. And mm-hmm. uh um, not not trying to be overly political by any means when I say this, but uh, you know, the other day I, I went up speaking in the hospital, I went up to the hospital and and uh, we had a, a COVID patient and the nurse said, you know, Pastor, you need to wear a mask and she's insisting, and I just said to her, I said, Ma'am, I said, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or rude or anything like that, but I'll put the mask on, but when I'm going in to see my parishioner, they're going to see my face, you know, and yes, they had COVID and I'm going to, they're going to see my face. They need to see the face of their pastor smiling upon them with joy and confidence and assurance for them to say what, to see their pastor smile and say, Jesus holds you and to smile with the joy of God from their shepherd. And so again, not trying to be political by any means, but that's just a firm conviction that I have, you know, as, as a pastor. And so the idea of a face is one's presence and so Mm. again this is you know a lack of presence this is presence but once you see the face of a person the face can also be what kind or grumpy right it can be angry an angry face right Uh, or a happy face Right. And even to sort of peel back the, the politics and the COVID, because everybody wants to talk COVID before they actually talk, you know, everything else. Just just sort of do it with communication today. Like the, the best way to talk to somebody, if you just had a fight with somebody, you need to sort it out. The best way to do that is probably actually face to face because there you can you can yeah. read the nuance. Yeah. You can figure it out. If you can't do that, we'll, we'll try a, like a FaceTime or a video chat. But it, worse than that's a phone call. The very worst way to figure out how to, to sort of make nice after a fight is by texting. I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because you, you, you don't have that face. And so you start to make assumptions and there's a saying about assumptions somewhere uh that that uh, we won't repeat on the podcast uh but but here's the thing um we do this with God too. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, we, we feel removed from him because we, we read his book. Like I can read this, but I don't see him face to face with this. So so where do I start to to comprehend this? How do I start to, to ready myself for this? Am I am I missing it all together right now? What's going on? Well, my books fell over, but but we'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this goes back to the book of Exodus, right? Talking about Moses seeing, hmm. uh, you know, God being in his presence and to have his face. Now, you know, we, we look back to the book of Exodus and we, we, we contemplate uh, the presence of God. Uh, the presence of God, uh, if you were an Israelite during that day, to see God what? striking down the firstborn. Uh, we see uh, the, 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 the blood of the, the Nile turned to blood, all these huge plagues. And so the face of God could be uh, quite terrifying, um, obviously. And I would say that to a certain extent that, uh, not a certain extent, but I would say it's absolutely true, 100%, that the face of God at, 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 on the one side is absolutely terrifying, that, that God's presence, uh, simple mankind in the, in, in the presence of God, uh, we don't stand a chance, that God would be completely just and morally upright if he were to smite us all to hell uh, as we're doing the confession of sin. I mean, he, he would be morally just to do that. Right. That was Isaiah's thing too, right? He, he beheld right. the, the face of God and, and lost it. 
Well, and then we think of Peter too. I mean, and, and, and when seeing the glory of Jesus, right? Um, you know, Jesus does all these miracles, and and then all of a sudden Peter just breaks out of this, like, "God have mercy on me, a sinner!" And he just he just like crumbles, and you know, he's in the boat, and he just crumbles, uh, in before Christ, uh, feeling like this big, and 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 so there's a sense where, yes, the presence, the face of God is is mighty, it's powerful. And there, there should cause some fear um, that we're not God and that we're sinful and he's holy and he's righteous. And so that's the one side of the coin, right? The, the one side, and that's, that's true. Uh, however, at the same time, there's another side of the coin, and that's the gospel, that we see the face of God in Christ Jesus and the presence of, of, of Christ for us. And Jesus, what does he do? He, he goes to that, well, he goes to the Jordan, right? And gets in the water with a bunch of dirty sinners uh, and he carries all that sin, and he goes right to that cross, and he what becomes uh, that sin curse on our behalf, and then he rises from the grave, and he smiles upon his disciples, and he what gives us his body and his blood, he baptizes us, he pronounces absolution, and so when we think of Christ, we have the face of his kindness upon us, uh, satisfying the wrath of God, satisfying that 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 angry face, if you will, and giving us a face of compassion, tenderness, and and uh, hope, and so. The presence of God shines upon us, right? And the benediction shines upon us as the baptized right. because of Jesus. I was even thinking during uh, communion, uh, right before we actually start to eat and drink, your, your pastor will hold up the, the host and, and the chalice and say, the peace yeah. of the Lord be with you. And, and it's not just sort of like peace as everywhere, man. Uh, but but yeah, like, yeah. if you want peace, look at Jesus. He's right here. This is the instituted host that is the body of Christ. Look there. You can behold the face of God at the table and, and find peace. That's That's wonderful. Yeah, I always call that. I always call that the Simba moment, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, joking. I, I always jokingly say, "Well, that's a, you know." But you, you, you're absolutely right. You, you, you lift up the There's body of Christ. There. Yeah. And then the peace. Where's the peace? Right, right here. This peace mm. of the Lord be with you. Right. And so God's kindness, uh, His 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 shining face of presence, uh, is, is right there in this peace that He atoned for you for the forgiveness of your sins to strengthen your faith. And so, you know, we, we think about, you know, I would say, okay, now back to your original question, you know, mm-hmm. of, of, of uh, I would say back, you know, 500, 800 years ago, uh, the, the face of God was, was an angry face, which we would say is true, absolutely, that, that God has wrath for sin. And so there's true. And they, but they were lacking the face of kindness, the face of the gospel, if you will. Yeah, God uh, was in our a day, judge. Yeah, yeah. So they, they saw Jesus as, as a right, righteous judge, which is true. <laughs> Uh, but mm-hmm. they failed to see Jesus, but not only, um, yeah, you know, as 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 this suffering servant, right? He was only the now, judge, not both. And, and right, then today, right. and today, yeah. So what? Today we 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 see Jesus. I would say, I don't even know if we could even say that. You know, there's a smiling face, but the American church has nothing of God's wrath, nothing of judgment, nothing of sin, and so we just kind of a squishy teddy bear face. Right. There can't really be grace if there's not actually you're being saved from from nothing. If, if you're not being saved from judgment, then then it's not grace anymore. It's just sort of, you know, a, a vague nice to see you, which which is not the worst thing in the world. But if you've actually got sins that you need saved from it, it's it's nothing. But this is this is something we do with with everything. Lutherans, we're, we're good at these sort of dichotomies. You know, we have we have law and gospel um, and in the same way we, we should be good at these dichotomies, we still sort of swing back and forth. There's just this pendulum. And so, you know, we will focus really, really hard on one and then we'll focus really, really hard on the other. Are you a sinner or are you a saint? Or is it both and all the time? And in your worst days, you feel like only a sinner and not a saint. And in your, your probably the most dangerous days, you feel only like a saint and not a sinner. But but to, to actually sort of walk that narrow road and recognize that in, in the face of our Lord is that the, the face of mercy and the face of judgment. There's only one real way to do that. You have to look to the cross of Christ, which is the thing that's missing in both accounts. Yeah, yeah. There, there has to be, I don't know if even the word synthesize is probably not a good word, but but there has to be there has to be something, well, well, yeah, we say it this way, there has to be a reconciliation, right? There has to be mm-hmm. redemption, reconciliation, atonement. Uh, there has to be between between the face of, of, of righteous God and the, uh, the face of sinful mankind, there has to be something to reconcile and do those two. And, and, and I think oftentimes in our society, what says, well, I'm, 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 a, I'm a sinner, so therefore God can't well, really take that sin so seriously. So we diminish his angry face and put like a happy clown face on him and, oh, we have to synthesize. Or what we, we diminish our sin 
and we would, well, we're not that bad, so we can synthesize and, uh, and make that. But there's only one way to reconcile those two things, and that's, you know, the cross, the redemption, the forgiveness of Jesus. Uh, right, because then you're not picking one or the other, but you can actually find both. I can find yeah. God's wrath being poured out on the cross. Jesus is willingly bearing it, and there I can actually find God's mercy and God's grace, too. It, it's there where where he, he prays to the Father, uh, why have you forsaken me, but also still commends Mary to, to John. Uh, he, he's actually up there suffering the wrath of God and still pouring out grace and mercy upon you and me. Uh, we, we need both and, and, and that's a trickier thing uh, because we always want to sort of run to one and then run to the other and just sort of hopscotch between them. But the cross lets you do both. Yeah. You know, I, and I don't have to go too much in the ditch, but this is just, this is worth mentioning. I just, I just love the Old Testament from the perspective where, uh, you know, God would come and dwell in the midst of the people. He would dwell above the, uh, the, the um, yeah. um, ark, you know, and so in the ark was what uh, you, you had, uh, thinking back to Indiana Jones, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you think back uh, the ark itself you had you had uh, Aaron's staff and you had the 10 commandments and so forth right and so you had those 10 commandments in that ark and then on top of it you had what was called a mercy seat and it was on the top of it and then so then you have 10 commandments mercy seat and then God will come and dwell above the mercy seat and then the blood of the sacrifice was gone w- went where it went between on that mercy seat so you had blood shed blood between the righteous and holy God and the 10 commandments that the people had broken. And then that reconciliation is what the shed blood and that's what foreshadows Jesus, the shed blood for us. That's that's brilliant. Um, it, it's it's important too because then you don't need to be afraid of either one. Um, if, if you're looking towards that that blood of Christ, then when you find a, a God who is angry at the things that you have done and not done, you get a, a place to take that instead of a place to run away from. Uh, yeah. I, I want to get closer now to the God who calls my sins wrong because I know that He is there to forgive me to to pour that wrath out upon Jesus, and I also know that I, I don't want to just embrace those sins because I know they're forgiven because I I know the damage that they do. I don't need to. to run from my my sins. I don't need to to run from my Savior. I just simply hand my sins to Jesus and, and then strive to live as he has given me to go. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it all comes back to, it seems every week we come back to Jesus. You it's know? a good place I to mean, end. It's a good place to end, right? Yeah. Jesus for us. He's the atonement. He's the reconciliation. He's the one who, what, uh, through Christ, his face shines upon us. Love it. Pastor, thanks so much. Yeah. Good to see you, Harrison. Hey, you too. Take care.